Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Four Flight Fundamentals. My name is Ryan McBride. I'm the Vice President of Product Design at Four Flight. So my team is responsible for making all of the features within Four Flight Mobile easy to use and easy to understand. The presentation today, Four Flight Fundamentals, is designed for folks who are brand new to the application and want to understand all the basics of how it works, as well as people who are maybe been, been using the application for a while and want to brush up on the basics. We're going to go through all the core areas of Four Flight Mobile today. We're going to take you from zero knowledge all the way to filing a flight plan, getting a weather briefing, and flying with the application uh, confidently. A little bit about Forflight uh, before uh, we continue. Forflight was founded in 2007. It was founded by two gentlemen, Tyson Wise and Jason Miller. Tyson and Jason actually met online through some aviation discussion forums. And they got together and started thinking about what the iPhone, which had just been introduced, uh, might hold, what potential it might have to make pilots' lives a little easier. The first version of Forflight wasn't even called Forflight. It was called My Metar, and it was a simple website, and you could go to it and you could enter an airport code, and My Metar would spit out the Metar for you. That was version one. Uh, we've come a long way since then, of course. Uh, the iPad, when it was introduced in 2010, that's really when the, co the company took off and when people really started to adopt the platform. Uh, we pride ourselves on building what we believe are the most elegant, high-performing apps in aviation. And we also pride ourselves on something we call our fanatical pilot support team. Who here has contacted the support team at ForeFlight before? Yeah, a good amount of people. So the support team at ForeFlight is available seven days a week. They're all pilots, most of them are instrument rated, and they're all ForeFlight experts. And they're happy to answer any questions or concerns you have about the product. I'm going to give you information at the end of the presentation on how to contact them. We're proud to say we've been the number one selling aviation app in the world since 2010. So today, we're going to start by talking about the iPad a little bit. Uh, whether you're purchasing your first iPad or interested in upgrading to a brand new iPad, there's a few short recommendations we generally make, and I'm going to go over those recommendations today. Then we're going to dive right into ForeFlight Mobile. We're going to go through all of the core areas of the application one by one. I'm going to highlight all the primary buttons and functions and features and things you should know. Uh, and then I'm going to give you some information at the end of the presentation on how to learn more about ForeFlight, as well as how to contact our support team. And finally, we're going to have plenty of time for a Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions about what I'm discussing today, please just write that question down or remember it, and we'll get to it at the end of the presentation. Before I dive into the application, I want to talk a little bit about what's new in ForeFlight. Uh, there's always something new in ForeFlight Mobile. We're always introducing new features and functions. You know, we're, we're all pilots ourselves, and so we're often thinking, you know, we'll go out on a flight on the weekend and think, hmm, it would have been cool if I had this feature, or wouldn't it be neat if the app could do that? That's the primary way that we develop our roadmap, and we also take customer requests into account in that roadmap as well. A lot of updates since ForeFlight was last here in Oshkosh. In fact, there have been 24 releases of ForeFlight Mobile. In those 24 releases, there have been over 100 new features. That's the good news, lots of, lots of new stuff. The bad news is we've only got 60 minutes today. So uh, we're going to go over not every single new thing uh, in the application, uh, but I'm going to show you a, a few quick highlights real quick before we dive into the fundamentals. This is a brand new uh, feature. We've recently added weather to the profile view. Um, so if you're not familiar with the profile view, it's available to pro customers and up. Uh, and for folks who are on the performance subscription, they have access to a brand new uh, weather display in the profile. So you can turn on the icing forecast, see where the icing is going to be, the turbulence forecast, see where the bumps are going to be. And you can also look at the clouds, the cloud forecast, see where the cloud bases and tops are going to be along the route, maybe adjust your route based on that. That's brand new. Another thing we've been doing is investing a lot in 3D visualization. We think 3D visualization has huge potential to improve situational awareness, especially when you're pre-flighting, if you want to understand what your route is going to look like, what terrain you're flying over, what the weather's going to look like, what an approach looks like. This is our 3D preview. It's built into the latest version of ForeFlight. You can preview your route in third person or like this in first person. Um, there's a timeline along the bottom of the screen. You can move back and forth along the route and you can select different layers that you want to see, different types of weather in 3D. So in this case, I've turned on turbulence and I'm moving up and down in altitudes to see where the turbulence is going to be along my route. Here's the turbulence forecast. It's telling me there's gonna be some turbulence below me and uh, a bit to the right of my planned flight path. And I can turn on different layers and move back and forth. So this is 3D preview. This is available in the latest version of ForeFlight. It's included in the Performance Plus subscription. 
In addition to previewing your route in 3D, you can preview uh, different airports in 3D as well, including traffic, even night lighting. You can switch to night mode, and you'll actually see the real lighting system in use at that airport. Uh, the actual true lighting system for every runway for every airport in the world is rendered true to life in the application. Even the Pappy Vassy system is dynamic based on the camera angle you're looking at. Um, so we think Airport 3D is a great way to familiarize yourself with an airport, especially if you've never been there before. Another new feature is something we call our dynamic winds and temps layer. We got some feedback from customers that they wanted a more intuitive way to understand what the winds are doing. And so we built this. This is a global uh, wind model, and you can pan and pinch and zoom anywhere to see what the wind is going to be doing. You can move up and down in altitudes to see how the wind patterns change at different flight levels. The coloring here indicates either the temperature that's forecast at that altitude, or you can switch to speeds. So in this case, the color now indicates the actual speed of the wind in that area. So again, that's our dynamic temps and winds layer that's available to Performance Plus customers, and that's out now. Another new feature that was a customer request, actually, was the ability to visualize and then add holds to your IFR flight plan that you're, that you're planning. This is what we call Hold Advisor. It's accessible via the Procedure Advisor button in the top right-hand corner of the flight plan drawer. When you open up the, the Hold Advisor, you're going to be able to select any fix that you wish to hold at, and ForeFlight will pre-fill the fix it thinks you're going to hold at based on your, your route that you've planned, but you can change it. You can customize things like the size of the hold, measuring in distance or in time. You can define left turn, right turn, inbound and outbound course, and optionally you can specify your hold altitude, speed, and your EFC as well. Another new feature in, uh, in uh, ForeFlight Mobile uh, that's kind of a unique thing for us is called the Taxi Route Editor. So in the latest version of ForeFlight, for Performance Plus customers, you can opt into this. This is a beta feature. Um, it's, a, it's a little new for us. Normally we ship things that are, uh, you know, we always, we're always concerned about quality assurance at ForeFlight, right? So we're always heavily testing things and no exception here. But the thing about this feature is we need you to use it to make it better, to improve it. And so it's a beta feature that you can opt into. But the idea behind taxi, the taxi route editor is you can very simply type in your taxi route just like you would type in your route on the map. And ForeFlight will automatically draw out the taxi route for you, including symbology and colors to indicate hold short conditions or cleared to cross conditions, that sort of thing. We've also been making a huge, huge improvement to the iPhone version of ForeFlight Mobile. You know, most of our customers primarily use the iPad, but we have a lot of customers who use ForeFlight on the iPhone as well. And a common question we, we would get was, why is the iPhone different from the iPad? And the answer is, uh, because most of our customers were using ForeFlight on the iPad, that's where we were dedicating most of our resources. However, as we've seen more customer usage and adoption of the iPhone, we've been working on bringing the iPad features to the iPhone. So I'm happy to say, as of today, the iPhone has 99% of the features that the iPad has. It has the exact same user interface. So when you learn how to do something on the iPad, you should be able to apply that knowledge to the iPhone as well. And of course, everything you do on one device in ForeFlight will synchronize to the other automatically, so your devices stay in sync. This is our forum schedule for the week. So here we are, 1 o'clock on Friday, Fundamentals. After this presentation, we're going to have what we call our influencer panel. we got a bunch of great folks, YouTube uh, channel folks, who are going to come up and talk a little bit about how they fly with ForeFlight. That'll be right here. Um, at 2.30. And then tomorrow, we're going to do, we're going to go over all those what's new features, all the stuff I was just talking about, we're going to go over it more in depth. And that's at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then we'll be having this presentation again at 1 o'clock. I want to point out that all these presentations, along with a bunch of other presentations and videos we've made, are all going to be available on our website. This is being recorded. So if there's a presentation you can't make this week, just go to the ForeFlight website after the show, and there will be a recording, and you can watch it on your own time. And just as a quick reminder, the latest version of ForeFlight is 13.5. It's available now in the App Store. And you can check out the latest features at our booth in Hangar C. OK, so let's talk about the iPad. Whether you are getting a new iPad or maybe upgrading an existing iPad, a um, lot of different options out there. And we often get questions from customers, what's the best iPad for ForeFlight? Here's the short advice. If you're going to get an iPad, we recommend getting the Wi-Fi plus cellular model, OK? The reason we recommend the cellular model is that's the only version that comes with an internal GPS. When Apple manufactures the iPads, the computer chip that contains the cellular uh, connection is also the computer chip that contains a GPS. 
So if you want an internal GPS, you need the cellular model. You don't have to sign up for cellular service with Verizon or AT&T, but you do need the cellular model for an internal GPS. If you don't have the cellular model iPad, you can attach an external GPS. ForeFlight supports a wide variety of external GPSs. So once you've decided to get the cellular model, then you have two options uh, f from, from our perspective. We recommend either going with the iPad Pro or the iPad Mini. ForeFlight will work just the same on both those devices. It's a totally subjective choice. It's up to you. The iPad Pro is much larger. The iPad Mini is much smaller. It's whatever you are most comfortable with in your cockpit. I fly a 172, and the iPad Mini is the perfect size for me but it's totally up to you. And then in terms of storage size, all the iPads are available in a variety of different storage sizes. We recommend the 256 gigabyte size. You can download all the information that ForeFlight has for the entire planet and still have plenty of room on that iPad for other apps, photos, and videos if you get the 256 gigabyte size. If you have more questions about iPads and which one to get, we put together a little web page. It's called the ForeFlight Buying Guide, and you can check it out on our website at that URL. And that goes through both the short advice and then uh, the long advice, more, more detail. Uh, and then if you have any questions about the, the iPad to, to pick up, you can send us our team an email, team at foreflight.com, and we're happy to give you some advice. Okay, let's check, let's talk about ForeFlight Mobile, the application. We like to refer to ForeFlight Mobile as an integrated flight app, which basically means our goal as a company is to take all the things a pilot might need, pre-flight, in-flight, post-flight, and put them in one app so you don't have to go anywhere else for anything you need. Um, ForeFlight Mobile can do all of these things. Airport information is available. You can browse different types of maps and charts, look at plates, organize documents, look at different types of weather imagery, file and brief flight plans. You can take notes on your iPad screen with a feature we call Scratchpad, and a whole lot more. And we're going to go over all of that today. If you haven't downloaded ForeFlight before, you can do it on your iPad. It's very easy. You just need to open up the App Store and search for ForeFlight Mobile and t tap the blue icon to download it. It's that simple. So let's talk about getting around the app. When you first download ForeFlight and you open it up for the first time, you'll see a view that looks like this. This is the airport view. At the bottom of the screen are a series of buttons. We call these buttons tabs. And collectively, we call this area of the screen the tab bar. The tabs are all the core areas of the app. So you can very quickly move with one tap between different areas. We're going to move left to right across these tabs today. Okay, So we're going to start on the, the most left side, and that's the airports view. So again, here's the airports view. This is what it looks like. Uh, when you open up ForeFlight for the first time, this is what you'll see. In this case, we're looking at JFK airport information. If I wanted to pull up information about a different airport, I can go up to the search box at the top of the screen, and I can type the airport code that I'm looking for. For example, I could type K-O-S-H for Oshkosh. You'll notice there's a bunch of suggestions here in this list. The first is what I was looking for, Oshkosh, the airport, and I could tap on that and pull up the airport information. But there's a lot of other things you can do here. You'll notice ForeFlight is recommending things you might want. For example, it's saying, hey, if you're looking for a procedure for Oshkosh, tap here, and it'll load all the procedures for Oshkosh. Or maybe you're looking for the Oshkosh VOR. If you're looking for that and information on that, you can tap it here. You can think of this almost like a, like a Google search with an autocomplete, right? Here's all the suggestions and things you might want. So I did want the airport, so I'll tap on the airport, and my view is refreshed with the information for Oshkosh. There's two areas of this view. There's a top section, which is a summary section. This includes high-level information about the airport. So I can see things like the airport's name, what the sunrise and sunset times are. You'll notice under latest weather, it says VFR. I get the winds and the sky conditions. Based on the latest METAR, we'll tell you right up front what the flight category is at the airport. I can also see field elevation and pattern altitude, any fuel or procedures that are available, and common frequencies I might need. Down at the bottom of the screen are a series of tabs that run across the center of the screen, and this allows you to dive deeper into information about this airport. As an example, here I am on the Info tab, and you can see under Info that we have all the frequencies. And the frequencies are organized by category. So if I wanted to pull up the tower frequency for Oshkosh, I could tap on the tower category. And on the right-hand side, I would see all of the available tower frequencies. If I move one tab over in the airport view to weather, I have a variety of different types of weather that are available to me. Right here, we're looking at the METAR. You can see the raw METAR up top. It's color-coded. In this case, it's green. That means this is a VFR flight category that was reported. If it's blue, that means marginal. 
If it's red, that means it's IFR. And if it's magenta, that means it's low IFR. You'll see in the top right-hand corner, after, uh, next to where it says VFR, over on the right-hand side, it says 49 minutes ago. That was when the METAR report was last made. And then underneath it, I can see a translation. So if there's any codes in the METAR that I'm not quite sure of, I can just look at the translation and figure out what's going on. Similarly, for the TAF, if I select the TAF, I get the raw TAF up at the top. Again, it's color-coded. Each of the forecast blocks will be color-coded based on the flight category that is forecast to be in effect at that time. And then underneath that, I can scroll down and I can get a translation for each of the time blocks in the TAF. You'll notice there's a little black button there with an icon. It says Forecast Discussion. I highly recommend checking this out. The forecast discussion, you can think of it almost as like a blog post from the meteorologist. Whenever meteorologists are posting uh, terminal forecasts, which are handwritten, right? They're, they're made by real people. They often write what's called a forecast discussion. And this is just a plain English description of what's in the forecaster's mind. What are they thinking? Why are they issuing the forecast this way? It's really great to, to read up on it. And it allows you to get a better sense of what's going on in the area. There's another type of forecast available here, MOS, or MOS. MOS stands for Model Output Statistics, and it's a forecast, just like the TAF. But unlike the TAF, it's not handwritten by a meteorologist. It's automated. It's based on a computer model. The reason we've included the MOS forecast here because, is because it's not specifically an aviation product, but it has a couple of unique benefits. It has what we call greater temporal and spatial resolution. That's just a fancy way of saying it goes farther out into the future than the TAF, and it forecasts time blocks that are spaced closer together than the TAF. The MOS is also available at far, far, far more airports than TAFs are. And so for folks who don't have a terminal forecast nearby them but want to get a sense of what the weather is going to be doing, oftentimes the MOS is a great option. The other type of weather forecast that's uh, immediately below the MOS is new. This is available to all customers. It's what we call our daily forecast. The daily forecast allows you to see 10 days out what the weather is going to be doing, and you can tap on a day and get an hourly breakdown of what the weather is going to be doing per hour. Again, this is not an aviation-specific forecast. It's actually a proprietary weather model from the weather company, an IBM business. But we integrated it into ForeFlight because many customers told us, hmm, you know, I use ForeFlight for everything, but I'm planning a trip next week, and it's, it's just tough to see really what's going to be going on, on next Friday. Can you make that easier? So we said, sure, we'll build in a daily 10-day forecast for that. I'm going to move one tab over uh, at the top to the runway section. This is all the runway information. This is the same stuff you'd expect to find in the green book, the chart supplement, the airport facility directory. Uh, but we've augmented this information to make it a little more useful. So you can see here I have uh, runway five and two, three selected. See, you can see I have a bunch of arrows. See these arrows, green arrows and red arrows? That's your headwind and tailwind component right now for that runway based on the latest METAR. So it's a quick way to see, OK, what's, what are the best winds here? And you'll notice we actually apply a little bubble right there for runway 1, 3, and 3, 1. It says best wind, runway 3, 1. When this screenshot was taken, the winds were favoring 3, 1. Next tab over is procedures. If you ever want to pull up a procedure for an airport, whether that's a taxi diagram or an arrival, a departure, an approach, you can simply go to the airport page, tap the procedure tab, select the type of procedure you want. In this case, uh, we're looking at airport procedures, and I can see all of the surface diagrams that are available. The types of options you'll see in this list will vary depending on your subscription level. Uh, if you want to open up in a diagram, simply tap on the name, and it will open it up in full screen. Simple as that. So let's say, uh, oh, sorry, actually, before I move on, I want to highlight another type of surface diagram. Down here at the bottom is another type of taxi diagram. It's called the four-flight diagram. We get a lot of questions from customers, what is a four-flight diagram? Why would I use this over the FAA diagram? The answer is, the FAA does not make taxi diagrams for every airport in the United States. But we have customers that collectively pretty much fly at every airport in the United States. And so our customers told us it would be really nice if we could just have taxi diagrams for all these places we fly that the FAA apparently hasn't prioritized. And we said, sure, we can do that. So we built a team. It's called the GIS team, or Geoinformation Science Team. And the team basically uses survey information and satellite data and aeronautical data to create custom charts and fill in the gaps that the FAA has left. You can open up the four-flight diagram. It looks like this. Uh, you can tell it's the four-flight version because of the logo. Uh, we've added a, a few more uh, color, colored 
points to the diagram to highlight things. Hot spots are called out in orange, for example. So if you don't have an FAA taxi diagram at an airport that you fly to, check to see if there's a four-flight diagram. There most often is. Of course, in addition to taxi diagrams, we can pull up uh, airport approaches in the airport's view as well. I can tap on procedure and then approaches, and I get a list of all of my approaches that are available. I can tap on the one I want to open up in full screen. You'll notice in this screenshot, there's a blue box. It might be hard to see in the back, but there is a blue box around a, the, uh, the plan portion of the procedure here. Whenever you see a blue highlight box around a portion of a diagram, that's ForeFlight telling you this is the geo-referenced portion, which means if you have a GPS signal and you have a ForeFlight Pro subscription or above, you will see your aircraft position on top of that diagram, whether it's a taxi diagram, an approach plate, whatever. Sometimes we get questions from customers about, hey, that's really neat, but it would be even cooler if I could see my airplane position in the profile section of the approach plate. And the answer is we unfortunately can't do that yet. And the reason is the, the profile section of the procedure is not drawn to scale. Because it's not drawn to scale, it's very difficult to locate your GPS position on, on, that, uh, on that diagram. But I, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, ForeFlight includes a profile view on the map and that will include, if you add a procedure to your flight plan, that will include all the waypoints. So you can look at your procedure in that profile view, but again, not here on the uh, approach plate. Okay, the last tab over on the right, that's the NOTAM section. If you want to pull up NOTAMs for the airport, you can go to there and look at uh, different NOTAMs organized by section, airport NOTAMs, obstacles, TFRs. If you're a Jeppesen subscriber, you'll also see Jeppesen-related NOTAMs in this view. For each of the NOTAMs, by the way, we, we highlight things we think are important to know. For example, you can see certain keywords like out of service are highlighted in red to draw your attention. We also parse out all that, um, all that information that the FAA issues and we, we very clearly tell you when it's effective, when it expires, and how long the duration of the NOTAM. I want to highlight one more thing here on the airport view. Um, I'm back on the info tab now where we were looking at frequencies. If you scroll down past the frequencies in this view, there's a few more options. One of them is the AFD. The AFD, of course, is where a lot of this information is derived from. But if, you're, if you prefer just looking at the regular AFD page, like it would look in the printed book, you can tap on AFD. And it'll take you right to the page in the AFD that this airport is on. One more thing that's kind of neat, uh, if you keep scrolling down in the info view, uh, under services here, if you're flying into an airport for the first time, you want to see what businesses are available, what restaurants are nearby, you can go here, select that category. In this case, I'm looking at restaurants and see what's nearby. If you open up this view on your iPhone and tap on a phone number here for one of these businesses, ForeFlight will call that business for you on your phone. Up at the top of the screen is a button that says FBOs. If you tap on the FBO button, you'll see all of the businesses that are available at this airport. If it's a business such as uh, uh, an FBO that offers fuel service, you'll see the fuel prices as well. The fuel prices are color-coded based on their relative expensiveness compared to other airports nearby that are offering fuel. You can tap on a specific business to open it up, and then you get even more details. You get all the fuel prices, frequencies, phone numbers, websites, and email addresses for the business. If you move one tab over in this view to fees, you can see any of the uh, fees that this FBO uh, has d based on different criteria. Those will be listed here. And then the comment section is really useful. If you're interested in what other ForeFlight customers, the experience that they've had at that FBO, you can go to the comment section and read whatever other people have had to say. And you can also add your own comment in this view as well. You can think of this almost as like Yelp for FBOs. Okay, let's move on to the maps view. The maps view is where I think the majority of customers spend their time, uh, and for a good reason. It's a very, very powerful area of the application. The maps view is one to the right of airports along the bottom, the maps tab. Here we are looking at the maps view. Whenever you're looking at information uh, in the maps view, you interact with the map the same way. No matter what chart you're looking at, you can use one finger to pan around. You can take two fingers and spread them out on the screen. We call that pinch to zoom. You can zoom in to get more information. Uh, and as you zoom in, more detail will come forward on the map. Uh, I want to highlight a, a specific area of the map view that is important to know and, and, and understand. And that is this button up in the left-hand corner. This is what we call the layer selector. Uh, 
This button allows you to select the different types of charts you want to see, and then on top of those charts, select different layers, like types of weather, like radar or turbulence or fuel prices uh, or TFRs, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna tap on that button and I get a menu here. And this menu has two columns. It has a left column. The left column is all the charts that are available. Your menu on your iPad might look different than mine. This menu will change based on whatever subscription level you have and whatever geographic coverage you're subscribed to. But these are all the charts. And then on the right-hand side, on the right column, these are layers. So these are pieces of information you can visualize on top of whatever chart you've selected. So here's an example. Let's say we're going to go on a VFR flight. So I'll select the VFR sectional in the menu. And you can see my entire map is replaced with one giant VFR sectional. Again, you interact with the map the same way, no matter what type of chart you're looking at. Pinch zoom to zoom in. You'll notice as you zoom into certain areas, the map will switch. Here's Chicago, and boom, it switched to the terminal chart automatically. We often get questions uh, from customers, how do I look at the sectional? How do I look at the terminal chart? Forflight makes that super simple. As you zoom into an area, we show you the chart that gives you more detail. In this case, switching automatically to a terminal chart. Of course, if you were going on an IFR flight, you could select the IFR option. We have both IFR low and high charts in Forflight and you see it there. There's a couple other types of uh, charts and maps in the app that are available that aren't aviation specific, but we've included because we think they might be useful to you. One of them is the street map. Here it is. Um, this, you can think of this almost as like a Google map view, uh, and it's a great way to see where, where different things are, uh, look at highways and streets, that sort of thing. Uh, in the latest version of ForeFlight, that search box up in the top right-hand corner you can actually search for street addresses now. So if you enter a street address or a business name, you can very quickly locate that on the map and you can combine that with the street map uh, to get a better sense of where that thing is. Another really useful map is the aerial map. This is a satellite photography map. It covers the entire world uh, and it's pretty high resolution. As you zoom in, you'll get more and more detail. I wanna talk about one more type of map before we move on. And that's what we call the global aeronautical map. It's in the top left corner of the menu. This is a special map because unlike all the other charts in ForeFlight, which are essentially scanned versions of the paper chart that we then cut the edges off and stitch them together and put them in the app, this is not that. This is a dynamic map. It's actually rendered on the fly, on the device. The iPad is drawing the map as you're panning and zooming. It's derived from an aeronautical database. The Jeppesen Aeronautical Database is what powers this. Even if you're not a Jeppesen customer, you get the benefits of this functionality. This Jeppesen navigational database is built into every installation of ForeFlight, regardless of your subscription. And there's a couple benefits to rendering maps dynamically. One of them is the map can change depending on where you are and what you're doing. So as I zoom in on the aeronautical map, I get more information, nav aids, VORs, airways. As I continue to zoom in, even the taxiway diagrams are built directly into the map. So you don't even have to switch to a separate diagram. You can just zoom in once you land and get your taxi diagram. But another benefit uh, to the global aeronautical maps is they are customizable. So when you're looking at the aeronautical map, you can go up into settings, and in the settings menu, there is a variety of different options here under aeronautical. You can customize what shows up on the aeronautical map, uh, and you can change the way it looks as well. Um, you can change between light and dark themes. You can even adjust the text slider at the bottom to make all the labels on the map much, much bigger. One of the nice things about the dynamic map is it solves a common problem that customers have, and that problem is, for folks who are looking at a, a traditional chart, like an IFR chart or a VFR chart, and they're flying south, but they're tracking up, the chart is gonna be upside down, right? You're not gonna be able to read those labels. This aeronautical map fixes that problem. It's dynamic, it knows where you're flying, what you're doing, and it's always gonna rotate those labels so you can read them. Okay, so again, that's the left column, that's our charts column. Let's move over to the right-hand side. This is our layers pieces of information we can visualize on top of whatever chart we've selected. A very common usage for this column is selecting the radar option. Here's our composite radar. When I select the radar option, uh, I get a timeline along the bottom of the screen. You'll see this timeline in a variety of different types of layers, turbulence layers, 
uh, infrared satellite, you'll see it. Whenever there's a time component, you'll get an automatic timeline. You can play it or drag it, move back and forth. Um, you'll also notice there's a legend here. This is something we recently added based on customer requests that uh, it would be nice to have a legend for what all these colors represent. And so we've added that. If I go back here for one second, I want to highlight a couple things on this radar view. So obviously the color here indicates the intensity of reflectivity, right? But there's a variety of other things. You can see lightning strikes. Um, you can see, it might be a little hard to see in the back, but there are some black lines. There are some black lines on this chart. There's some here and some here and some up here. These black lines are what we call storm tracks, and they're trying to show you the direction and rate of movement for the radar. Each of the dots along that black line is a forecast 20 minutes of movement, okay? So you can see, oh, okay, this cell is gonna be at this dot in 20 and this dot in 40 and this dot in an hour. A variety of other things on here. Uh, you, sometimes you'll see black numbers on top of the radar. Those are echo tops, so that's the highest altitude that reflectivity was returned. That is not cloud tops, that's different. This is the highest altitude that there was actually precipitation being returned to the next rad station. And then you'll also see some icons. In this case, we have these little blue icons with some white dots in them. Those are hail signatures. So based on the reflectivity of that cell, it's possible hail in that area. Lots of other different types of weather layers in ForeFlight. Here's our enhanced satellite layer. We call it enhanced because it's actually a combination of two different types of satellite weather products, the visible satellite and the infrared satellite. By combining them together, you can see not just cloud coverage across the ground, but you can see the, the temperature of the clouds. And by the temperature, you can interpolate the height of those clouds. Another useful layer is our AirMet, SIGMET, and Center Weather Advisory layer. When I turn that on, I get all of my AirMets and SIGMETs and Center Weather Advisories plotted across the map. If you're interested in learning more about one of them, simply tap on it. That's a general rule, by the way. If there's something you see in ForeFlight and you want to get more information about it, just tap on it. Virtually everything in ForeFlight is interactive. I'll, I'd also just like to say, um, sometimes I talk to customers who are, who are a little hesitant to tap around in the app. Maybe they feel like they're going to break something or screw something up. ForeFlight is a very, very robust application. It's very difficult to break it. The best way to learn about ForeFlight and to become more confident in using it is to play with it. Feel free to tap around. That's the best way to get comfortable. Anyway, back here looking at the uh, SIGMETs, I tapped on a convective SIGMET and I can see information about it. We tell you what it is, uh, what, what, uh, when it's active, if it's active or not right now, and what the altitudes are for it. Another useful layer to look at is the TFR, or Temporary Flight Restriction Layer. TFRs are colored red if they're active, or yellow if they're upcoming, will be active soon. And again, you can just tap on a TFR to get information about it. I want to highlight one special thing here in the TFR layer, stadium TFRs. As pilots, we know that if there's a game going on in a major stadium, there's effectively a TFR over that area, and we're not supposed to fly there unless we're squawking and talking, right? Well, the FAA doesn't publish these TFRs. They put that on the pilot community to figure out uh, if there's a, an effective TFR over the stadium. We're all pilots ourselves at Fourth Flight. We thought that was kind of a hassle to, to have to check the newspaper every morning and see what the schedules were for the games nearby. Um, and so we built something to make it easier. So what Fourth Flight does is in the background, it looks at all the stadiums across the country. It looks at the capacity for each of those stadiums. And then it looks up the game schedule for each of the stadiums. And if there's a game going on with a certain capacity, that means there's a TFR in effect, it'll put a TFR on the map when the game is upcoming and it'll turn it red when the game is active. Another useful layer here is flight category. This is really simple. This just shows you all the METARs, the latest METAR reports across the world. So green is VFR, blue is marginal, red is IFR, magenta is low IFR. You can tap on a bubble to get more information about it. You'll notice here, see that METAR? It looks just like it looked on the airport view. You'll see that a lot in ForeFlight. You can pull the same information up in different locations, but regardless of where you pull the information up, the information will look the same. So when you learn how to do something in one area of the app, you can apply that knowledge to another area. Here's one of my favorite layers in ForeFlight, the winds aloft layer. Uh, that little I iPhone you have in your pocket or an iPad that you have, believe it or not, it can tell you what the, wind, the forecast wind speed, direction, and temperature is at any point on the planet, at any altitude. And you can look at that via the winds aloft layer. 
When you turn the Winds Aloft layer on, you get all your wind barbs. And you can pan around, you can pinch zoom, you can tap on one to see the direction, speed, and temperature. And you can move up and down in altitudes to see what the winds are doing at various flight levels. Another good one to look at is the pilot report layer. When you turn PIREPS on, you'll see them plotted on the map. Orange icons are turbulence reports. The number on the icon indicates the altitude that the report was made at. If you see a blue icon, that's an icing report. And if you see a gray icon, that's some other type of observation. You can tap on a pilot report to get information about it. And in the latest version of ForeFlight, we've translated pilot reports now. So if you're not super comfortable reading the raw pilot report text, just go to the translation below it. Very quickly, I want to highlight a couple other layers that I think might be useful to you. Uh, in our Performance Plus subscription, this is what's called our icing forecast. It's global. You can move up to uh, 15 hours out in the future, move up and down in altitude, see where the forecast icing is going to be. You can do exactly the same thing with turbulence using our forecast turbulence layer. And you can use a layer called surface analysis, which is basically a, a dynamic prog chart, covers the whole world, and you can see what the fronts are going to be doing, where they're moving up to 45 hours into the future. OK, so that's a little bit about charts and layers. Let's plan a flight. We plan flights in ForeFlight on the map view, and we do it using the flight plan drawer. That's this button up in the top left-hand corner, FPL, for flight plan. You can tap on that, and it slides down, sort of like a drawer. That's why we call it the flight plan drawer. Uh, and you'll notice in the middle of the screen, it says, tap here to create a route. So I'll do that. I'll tap in the center of the screen, and ForeFlight gives me a keyboard. It's saying, where would you like to go? So we can type waypoints and airports into our flight plan, just like we type words in a sentence, right? If you were typing an email, you'd type a word, then a space bar, then a word, then a space bar. We do the same thing with waypoints and airports. So for example, let's say we're going to plan a flight. And this flight's going to be, uh, we're going to depart here out of Oshkosh. So I'll do K-O-S-H on my keyboard, and then I'll hit the space bar. Two things happen. First of all, up at the top of the screen, you can see I have a little blue bubble around KOSH that I typed in. This bubble is telling, is ForeFlight telling you that's a real thing, that you didn't mistype it, that's a real airport identifier, um, and it's going to plot it for you on the map right here. Let's say we're going to go from Oshkosh down to my hometown, Chicago, Illinois. There's a nice little airport outside Chicago called Schaumburg. Schaumburg is 06 Charlie, so I'll type 06 Charlie and then the space bar. And I get a bubble, that's four flights saying, yep, that's real, that's good. And then you get a, your first leg here, plotted on the map. Uh, okay, now let's say we're gonna go over to, uh, we're gonna go over the lake, we're gonna go to Grand Rapids. So I'll type KGRR for Grand Rapids, and then the space bar. Now, maybe I'm not too keen on flying across Lake Michigan, right? Maybe I wanna go around the lake instead. Well, I could enter a different waypoint that I want to stop at up in my flight plan by using my keyboard, or I can use what's called touch planning. ForeFlight allows you to create and edit routes in two ways, by typing them in up the top or by touching on the map itself and modifying your route directly with your finger. Here's a good example of that. Uh, if I wanted to uh, go around the lake, uh, maybe to one of the airports uh, down south of the lake here, I can tap on my route leg, and I can drag it to where I want it. And then I can lift my finger up. And this is for flight saying, what do you want? I wanted Plymouth Municipal, so I'll select on that. I can filter this view, by the way. I can filter it. Waypoints, nav aids, airports, all nearby where I dragged my finger. But I want to go to Plymouth, so I'll select Plymouth right there. And you can see it's added that correctly. Back at the top of the screen, you can see it's inserted the bubble correctly. But I can move these bubbles, too. I can take Grand Rapids, and I can drag that where I want it and see my route change down here as well. So everything you do up here in the flight plan drawer synchronizes to your map. And any changes you make on your map synchronize back up to your flight plan drawer. So they're always the same. You can also quickly tap on one of these items, like Grand Rapids, to get information about it. Show the airport diagram, open it up, select an approach plate for it. Basically, quick little actions uh, to get information fast. Down in the bottom left-hand corner of the flight plan drawer is our uh, information readout. So this is going to tell you, based on what you've planned, what the total distance is of the route, what your estimated time in route is going to be based on your aircraft's performance and the winds aloft, what your estimated time of arrival is going to be based on your time of departure that you've entered, how much fuel you're going to burn in that airplane, 
and what your average headwind or tailwind component is averaged across the entire route that you've planned. To get these numbers, though, to get good numbers out of foreflight, you have to put good numbers into foreflight. You have to tell it a little bit about who you are, what you're flying, how that aircraft performs. We do that using these three buttons along the left-hand side of the screen. The first button has a tail number in it. This is the aircraft button. This is what, how we tell foreflight the type of aircraft we're going to be flying. You can tap on that button, and you can select an aircraft. These are all the aircraft that I had added, have added in the past. Um, and you can select that aircraft here, and ForeFlight will use that aircraft's information for its calculations. If you want to add a new aircraft to use, you can tap the plus button at the top of the aircraft menu, and you'll get a blank form. You'll notice in this form there's a ton of information to fill out. The more information you provide, the better your calculations are going to be. But you'll notice there are two fields here that are highlighted in yellow the tail number, and the aircraft type code. These are required fields. The reason they're required is, one, we need your tail number to uniquely identify that aircraft, to know really what it is. But the type code is important, too, because once you've entered the tail number and the type code, behind the scenes, in the background, Forfleet will automatically look up the type certificate information for the aircraft with the FAA's database, and it will start pre-filling a bunch of information for you to save you some time. That includes your ICAO filing codes. I know those are kind of a headache sometimes, all those mysterious codes. ForeFlight will look those up for you automatically and fill them in. Okay, the next button just below that aircraft button, this is our performance button. This is how we tell ForeFlight how fast we're gonna fly and how much fuel we generally burn when we fly. I can tap on the performance button and I see what a, a list of what are called performance profiles. Your list will, will vary. It'll look different depending on the subscription level you have and the type of aircraft you've entered. There are basically three different types of performance profiles. The basic profile is what we're going to spend most of our time on today. The basic profile allows you to define climb, cruise, and descent airspeeds, fuel burn rates, and climber descent rates. This is available to all customers, and for, for most GA customers, it's, it's plenty accurate. Um, there are a couple other types, though, of performance profiles. There's a bi-altitude profile and what we call the four-flight performance profile. These are only available in the Performance Plus subscription. The bi-altitude profile allows you to define all that same information in the basic profile, but define it at each altitude, right? Because obviously our performance changes with altitude. So you can define it for each altitude and that get even finer, uh, finer more accurate numbers. The ForeFlight performance profile is not user modifiable. It's actually manufacturer sourced performance data. So if you're flying something like a 182 or a Baron or something like that, ForeFlight has worked one on one with the manufacturers of these aircraft to get all the performance data, the stuff you'd expect to find in the POH. It's built into the app if you're a Performance Plus customer, so you don't have to enter anything. You just select your performance profile from the manufacturer and you get numbers by the book. Okay, so uh, basic profile is what I, I said we we're gonna focus on today. So you can add as many basic profiles as you want. Maybe you have your get there fast profile or your economy cruise profile, whatever you want. You can add as many as you like. They show up in the list here at the bottom. If you wanna create a new one, you can tap the add basic performance profile, that green button, and it'll open up the view. And you can see here, you can enter your climb, cruise, and descent information. At a minimum, we ask that you fill in your cruise information. If you fill in only the cruise information, ForeFlight will basically apply this to climb and descent phases of flight. But if you want even more accurate information, fill out the whole form. OK, so we've selected our aircraft. We've selected our performance profile. Now we need to figure out what the optimum altitude to fly this route at is. And we can do that using this button. We call this the Altitude Advisor. And you can tap on this button, and ForeFlight will show you, based on the current winds aloft information, based on your current uh, aircraft performance profile you've selected, and based on the route you've entered, it'll show you exactly how much time it's going to take you in that aircraft right now to fly that route, how much fuel you're going to burn, and what your average headwind or tailwind component is going to be at any altitude. You can filter this list by VFR or IFR altitudes, westerly or easterly headings, or browse all altitudes. You can also manually input an altitude that you wish to fly at up here. Now, I want to point out that 
all this stuff we've been doing, entering this information, we've been doing it in the edit mode of the flight plan drawer. Okay, so we've been in the edit mode on this, on this tab right here. But there's some other modes we can look at. We can go to the nav log when we're in flight, and we get a real-time nav log that updates as we fly based on our GPS position and GPS ground speed. And it'll tell us our times, our leg information, our fuel burn information for each leg. For flight will automatically transition the legs for you, so it'll make the next leg active as you, as you fly that leg. That's about maybe 5% of the features on the maps view. Um, that's, that's really just the, truly the basics. There's a whole lot more you can do on the maps view in ForeFlight, and uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to stop by our booth and hang your seat to get a demo of all of that. Let's move on to plates. So the plates view in ForeFlight is, is here along the bottom. It's right next to maps. And you can open it up and you'll see something like this. The plates view allows you to organize uh, what, what are called binders. You can think of a binder as like a folder. And you can, put, you can make as many binders as you want and put as many plates into each binder as you want. To create a binder, simply tap Add Other Binder at the bottom of the list view on the left. And ForeFlight will ask you to name your binder, give it a name. So let's say we're going on a big trip. So I'm going to name my binder my big trip, and I will save it. And when I do that, it's saved here on the left-hand side. And over on the right-hand side are all the plates in my binder. It's a new binder, though, right? I haven't added any plates to it yet. So let's do that. I'll tap Add Plate. And when I do that, I get a menu. You'll notice in this menu, there's a bunch of airports already listed here. When we're designing the software, we're always thinking about ways to save you time. No matter if it's pre-flight planning, post-flight, in-flight, whatever. We're trying to save you time. This list here is a bunch of suggestions. This is for flight saying, hey, I, I noticed you were recently planning a flight out of Oshkosh. Maybe you want to pull up a plate for Oshkosh. Or, hey, I noticed you were recently flew to a variety of these different airports. Would you like to pull up a procedure for those? So you can select the airport you want. If you don't see the airport you want a plate for, then you can use the search field. So let's say we're flying to Lakeland, Florida for, for Sun and Fun next year. I'll type K-L-A-L in the search box, and I'll select Lakeland. And these are all the procedures for Lakeland. And I can tap on them, and they will be added to the binder, just like that. And you can add as many as you like. Now, if I want to actually view the procedure, of course, I can just tap on it. It opens it up in full screen. And again, I want to highlight here, there's a blue section of the procedure, uh, and that blue section indicates it's georeferenced, and we can see our own ship position on top of that procedure. This is the blue box. Again, it goes around the outside of the uh, plan portion of the procedure. Another really useful feature, though, um, on the plates view is something we call NOTAMs on plates. So the FAA issues NOTAMs all the time, constantly, constantly pushing out NOTAMs for all different sorts of, of reasons. And obviously, as pilots, it's important to familiarize ourselves with all the NOTAMs that are relevant to our route. To make it a little easier, though, for flight in the background, it's always listening to the NOTAM system that the FAA has. And it's pulling in the latest NOTAMs all the time. And whenever you open up a procedure, and you see a red button up at the top there, that's for flight saying, hey, out of all the NOTAMs that have been issued, we looked at them all, and these are the NOTAMs that are relevant to this specific procedure that you're looking at right now. And so you can tap on that and view all the NOTAMs relevant to just this approach. Another useful thing to do on the procedure view is to annotate, make notes, or highlight things on top of the procedure. You can do that using the pencil icon up at the top left corner. When you open up the pencil icon, you can use your finger or a stylus, like an Apple pencil, and you can draw and highlight and make notes directly on top of the procedure. Um, I want to point out a really useful feature of these geo-referenced approaches. It's nice to be able to see your aircraft position on an approach or a taxi, -gram, a ta taxi diagram. But we wanted to kind of crank it up a notch, and um, we built what we call plates on map. The idea behind this is you can go up to this button in the top right-hand corner. It looks like a box with a little arrow coming out of it. We call this the Send To menu. You'll see this icon in a variety of different places all across the app. Whenever you see this icon, this is ForeFlight telling you, hey, this thing you're looking at right now, you can visualize this thing somewhere else. You can send it somewhere else. In this case, I'll tap on the button, and I have an option to send this procedure to the map. So I'll, I'll select Map. And ForeFlight will take that procedure, it'll take my aircraft position, it'll take all the annotations that I made, and it's going to visualize it on top of the map itself. So this is, pretty, this is a pretty powerful feature, right? If you think about all the different chart options we were looking at earlier, all the different uh, map layers, like radar, things like that, you can stack up different layers of information depending on what you care about to build an even greater situational awareness as you fly. OK, 
Okay, let's talk about documents now. Documents are one uh, tab to the right along the bottom next to plates. You can open up the documents view. It looks like this. Along the left-hand side here are uh, folders. Up at the top of the, of the screen here, there's an area that says binders. These are the folders that you have on the device. And you can add as many binders as you like, and you can add as many documents to each binder as you want. Underneath your binders, though, are these options. These options will look different on every device, depending on your subscription. These options are what we call drives. You can think of this as stuff that's available from different providers uh, that you might find useful, that you might want to download and have on your device. So for example, there's a Jeppesen section here if you're a Jeppesen customer, and you can go into the Jeppesen section and you can download all the airway manuals for Jeppesen. If you go to the ForeFlight section, you can download the manual for ForeFlight. If you go to the FAA section, you can download things like chart supplements, uh, the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, all the stuff you'd find on the FAA website is available here in the application. To download a document, just tap the little blue download on icon on the dock and it'll download and you'll know it's downloaded in two ways. First, you'll see a preview of it here, but you'll also notice a little green check mark that tells you that it's downloaded and it's the latest version and you're good to go. Um, if you're browsing a, a, a folder, you can tap into a folder. In this case, we're looking at the FAA drive and I can go into, for example, the chart supplement section and browse all the different chart supplements. If I wanted to download an individual chart supplement, I would tap on the, the blue icon to download it. If I want to download the entire folder of chart supplements, I can tap on the blue arrow up at the top next to the name of the folder, and that will download everything for you. And we also put the file sizes for each of the documents there next to the download button, just so you know how much data it's going to be downloading. Once you download everything, again, you get the previews for all the documents, you get the green check marks, and you're good to go. This button up at the top here, um, this allows you to customize the view. So we're looking at sort of a grid-based layout right now. All these documents are laid out next to one another. I can tap this button and it, it'll switch the view. It'll switch to a list-based view. It's all the same data, but just in a more compact view. This is personal preference. You can browse documents however you like. And you can tap on the button again to switch back to the grid view. So I want to uh, just highlight before we move on, there is a four flight section here. Like I mentioned, you can tap on that four flight section and you can download different documents. Um, the Oshkosh Notum, for example, is always included every year in the four flight section. You can go to that there, tap the download button, have the Notum with you when you come to the airport. Also in the four flight section is the pilot's guide to four flight mobile. This is the manual. There's one chapter for every feature. So you can actually download the manual and have it with you inside a four flight so you can access it whenever you want. Open up a document by tapping on it. You'll see it in full screen. You can do all the same stuff you can do on the plates view. So you can annotate using the pencil button. But you can also add this, um, add this document to another binder. You can see that folder up there? It's a little folder icon. If you tap on that, that allows you to take this document and move it somewhere else. Move it into another binder. Move it in wherever you want. You can also search through documents by using the search feature. Search by keywords. And you can create and browse bookmarks. So for example, I, I, I like to put my POH uh, in the documents view in ForeFlight, and I have bookmarked a variety of pages that I often reference so that I can quickly get to them. You'll notice here, there's our send to menu again, the little box with the arrow coming out of it. That's ForeFlight saying, you can take this document and you can move it somewhere else. So you can tap on that send to menu and you can move the document wherever you want. Down at the bottom of the screen are all the pages in the document. You can just swipe on the document itself to move back and forth between pages, but if you're looking for a specific page, you can run your finger along the bottom to that page. Okay, let's talk about weather imagery. All the information that you'd normally expect to find on aviationweather.gov, things like prog charts and probability of precipitation charts, everything on that website is available in the application. You don't have to go to the website. So you can go to the imagery tab along the bottom of the screen and you get a list of all the imagery. It's all organized by category along the left hand side. There is, there is a rhyme and a reason to how we've organized this menu. The stuff at the top up here, this is large areas, right? So these are weather charts that cover larger areas like prog charts, right? But as you move down the list and browse different sections, the weather imagery gets more specific to certain areas. And that's intentional, right? As a pilot, it's nice to be able to start out with the big picture, right? What's going on? What are the fronts doing? And then move down the list, see where the precipitation is going to be, et cetera. You can tap on a weather image to open it up. It'll open it up in full screen. 
you can use the arrows at the bottom. If there is a, a, a type of weather imagery that has a time component, meaning there's different forecast periods associated with this type of weather imagery, you can use these little arrows at the bottom of the screen to move back and forth between time periods. Okay, let's talk about filing and briefing. You can file and get weather briefings for both VFR and IFR flight plans in ForeFlight. We do this on the Flights tab. That's this tab on the bottom here. When you open up the Flights tab, you'll see a, a list of all the flights you've planned in the past. You can create a new flight by tapping the plus button. When you do that, ForeFlight will give you a flight plan form. A couple things in this flight plan form I want to highlight. First is this data at the top. This should look familiar. This is exactly the same information that we are looking at on the flight plan drawer. In the bottom left on the map view, that, those numbers, exactly the same information, but we've brought it here as well. Underneath that, you can enter your departure, destination, any alternates. You can select your aircraft and your performance profile, just like we did on the map view. You can generate a route or, or get a preview of your route here. You can also generate a more comprehensive planning nav log here. If you tap on that, you get a super, super detailed planning nav log. Tons of information if you scroll through this view. I um, want to highlight a couple things here. First, based on your aircraft's performance, ForeFlight will automatically calculate and insert top of climb waypoints and top of descent waypoints based on the route. If you scroll down in this view, there's a ton more useful information. Uh, frequency references, uh, uh, thumbnails of airport diagrams, really handy stuff. You can also get a weather briefing in ForeFlight. If you tap the briefing button for this flight, we'll give you the full weather briefing. You can browse the categories on the left-hand side. Again, this is all the same information you'd expect to find on aviationweather.gov. There's a big benefit, by the way, to uh, getting a weather briefing in ForeFlight. One, it's easy. It's super easy. Um, but two, if there's ever a question about whether you got a weather briefing for a flight, ForeFlight can answer that question, right? You have the briefing on the, on the device, but even if you lost the device, and you needed to pull up a briefing, we keep a record of every single briefing that is ever generated. And so if you need to pull up a record of your briefing in the future, send us an email, the tail number, the time of departure, and we'll give you the briefing. This button at the bottom, proceed to file, this lets you file the flight plan that you've, that you've planned. So I'll tap that and I get an ICAO flight plan form. ForeFlight will fill this all in for you based on everything you've planned, based on your aircraft's information, et cetera, but it's important to verify all these numbers. And you can always change things at this point if you wish, just prior to filing. If you're happy with it, tap the file button and off it goes. Couple benefits to filing with ForeFlight. The first is ForeFlight will automatically set up those ICAO codes for you, like I mentioned. But another nice thing about filing is once you file through ForeFlight, we're going to start sending you what are called adverse condition alerts. Between the time that you filed the flight plan and your estimated time of departure, if anything changes, maybe an AirMet pops up, maybe there's a new TFR, whatever, we're going we're to push notify you on your device about that thing. You can kind of think of adverse condition alerts like a weather briefing that's always staying up to date. It's always telling you if something changed. Also, if you're filing IFR flight plans, ForeFlight will give you your expected route. How do we do that? Well, ForeFlight has a direct connection to the air traffic control system. In the United States, that system is called ERAM, E-R-A-M, and it's basically a big supercomputer network, and it ingests all the filed flight plans, and it figures out, A, you're going to be cleared as filed, or B, no, nah, that's not going to work. We're going to assign you a new route. Well, ForeFlight is actually listening on your behalf the second you file. So you can file your flight plan, go get a coffee, whatever. In the background, ForeFlight's listening to the ERAM system. And if the ERAM system decides, hmm, no, this flight plan, we're going to have to change this route, ForeFlight can get that route from the ERAM system, and it'll send it to you. So you'll actually have your expected route on your device before you even call up clearance. Now, this is not a clearance, but it's what you can expect to hear from clearance delivery if you were to call them up. Another very useful feature, again, if you're filing IFR, is ForeFlight will give you your EDCTs, your expected departure clearance times, if there's any ground stop delays. OK, I want to highlight something here that is going to save you a little bit of time. We planned a flight here, right? We planned a flight earlier on the map. But then, to get a weather briefing, I went to the Flights tab. I went to a different area of the app, right? And I filled out the flight plan form there. You don't have to do this twice. You don't have to plan in one area and then plan in another area just to get a briefing. You can take the, 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 the flight that you've planned here on the map, and you can send it to the flights view. There's that fancy icon, the box with the arrow, right? That's for flight saying, Here's, you can take this route, and you can send it somewhere else. So let's say I want to I wanna get a weather briefing, and I want to file this flight plan that I've planned on the map, OK? So I'll tap Send To. 
And then I'll select flights. And when I do that, for flight will take my information, it'll copy it over to the flights view, it'll create a new flight plan form for me, it'll fill all my information in, and then in one tap, I can file it. We all know a big part of uh, being a pilot and flying is writing things down, right? Taking notes. And it's our mission at ForeFlight to allow you to ditch paper, to get rid of paper entirely. And so we built a feature called Scratchpad that allows you to take notes right on your device. This is the Scratchpad view. You can open it up here. And uh, when you tap on new Scratchpad, you get a couple different options. These are like templates, okay? They're different templates depending on what you want to do. The most basic template is the draw template. That just gives you a blank screen where you can draw with a stylus or you can draw with your finger. But there's a variety of other templates here. One of my favorites is the ATIS template. If you tap on that, you'll get a nice clean view here with all the components of the ATIS and then you can very quickly fill in the, the, the spots as you listen to it on the radio. Okay, if there is one thing to get out of this presentation today, it's this, okay? Downloads. When we fly with ForeFlight, pretty much all the time, we're not going to have a stable internet connection in flight, right? So it's super important that we've downloaded all the data we need before we go fly. ForeFlight makes this really easy. When you are uh, looking at the application in the bottom right-hand corner, the More tab, open that up, and you get this menu, okay? These are all a variety of different other options in the app. But up at the top of the screen is a Downloads button. If you tap on that Downloads button, you're going to see a view that looks like this. Here's a bunch of countries, okay? Let's say we're flying in the United States, and I need to download some charts and procedures for somewhere in the United States. I'm going to select United States up at the top, the first option. And when I do that, I get a new menu. And this menu has two sections. The first section, up at the top, this is where you tell ForeFlight the types of stuff you want. If you want VFR charts, toggle it on. You want IFR procedures, toggle it on. So you can turn on the types of stuff you want, and then underneath that, the areas you want it for. So in the United States, it's organized by state. In Canada, it's by province. In Europe, it's different. Um, but it, the idea here is you can turn on the types of things you want and the areas you want it for, okay? then. Tap the back button up at the top of the screen, back to the downloads view, and tap the big blue button. ForeFlight will look at the stuff you want, it'll look at the, the areas you want it for, and it'll download anything that you don't already have. When you tap the download button, in the latest version of ForeFlight, you now get a graphical loading bar here that tells you the total amount of data that's being downloaded, and you'll see a little blue line ticking across the screen showing you the progress of that download. Now let's say um, that you're going on a long, a long cross country. Maybe you're going, uh, you know, from California up here to Oshkosh, uh, and you're thinking, okay, what are what are all the states I'm flying through? Well, you know, I got to go on the map. Okay, what states are these? Then you got to go to the downloads view, and you got to find those states in the list. You got to check them off, and you got to hit the download button. We made it a, a little bit easier. So instead of doing that, we have a feature called Pack. Pack allows you to just plan your route tap one button, and ForeFlight will analyze your route and give you what you need for that specific route. This is the pack button. It looks like a little suitcase. Um, if you see a red dot on the suitcase, that's ForeFlight telling you, hey, if you're going to fly this route, there's some stuff you need that you don't have. So tap on the suitcase, and you get a view that looks like this. You'll notice your route. You get a preview of the route here, and then there's a, a, a shape around it. That's the corridor. It's a, it's a 25 nautical corridor on each, on each side, so 50 miles total. Any charts or weather or fuel prices, any information that intersects that corridor along your route, ForeFlight will prompt you to download here. So it's doing the hard work for you, right? It's figuring out where you're going, what, what the stuff within that corridor is, and allowing you to use one button, the pack button, to download it all. There's a whole lot more in ForeFlight. You know, I mentioned um, the, some of the 3D preview options we have now. This is an approach into Portland, Maine. Anyone been to Portland, Maine? A few people. It's a, Portland's a beautiful town. We have, a, we have an office there, actually. Um, this, so this is a, a 3D preview of an approach into Portland. Uh, in the latest version of ForeFlight, we actually, you can specify your minimums as well if you're flying IFR. And ForeFlight will put a pink box at your missed approach point indicating uh, as a bookmark uh, for your minima there. Synthetic vision is built in. The latest version of ForeFlight will show you not just terrain and obstacles in synthetic vision. It'll show you traffic, too, if you're connected to an ADS-B receiver. 
Forflight has a full weight and balance solution built in, so you can set up your aircraft weight and balance, you can drag and drop people and cargo between stations and see your uh, airplane information move within the CG envelope. Forflight also has a logbook built in. Using the Forflight logbook is really handy because, you know, if you're flying with Forflight, it has a GPS, right? It knows where you're going, it knows how many takeoffs and landings you did, it knows if it was daytime or nighttime, and Forflight can automatically log your entries for you, if you wish. There's a checklist built into Forflight as well. Forflight can, you can create your own checklists or start with many of our custom templates, and you can check things off as you go, or Forflight can actually speak the checklist to you. So you can leave your iPad to the side, select go, and it's like a challenge response between you and the, and the iPad, pretty handy. Glide Advisor is a real-time indication if you were to have an engine out situation wherever you're flying, based on the current winds aloft, based on your aircraft's glide performance, and based on any terrain or obstacles that are around you, the Glide Advisor will show you your available gliding distance in real time. We have a lot of customers, um, especially co folks who fly around the coast or over body bodies of water, who just leave this on all the time. And it's constantly changing and analyzing the environment. Procedure Advisor allows you to visualize both VFR and IFR procedures into and out of any airport in the world. It's a really great way to just get a sense of, okay, which direction do these departures go? Or, okay, what is this arrival going to look like? Or what is this approach going to look like? Forflight can also alert you uh, to a variety of different things. In this case, we're looking at what's called our hazard alerts. When you are flying with Forflight, the application is generating a 3D trajectory of your flight path in the background. And it's always analyzing where your aircraft is going versus what's ahead. And if Forflight detects a potential collision course based on your flight path and a terrain or obstacles ahead, it will alert you on the screen. It will automatically highlight that terrain, highlight those obstacles. It'll orient you track up by default for better situational awareness. And if you've connected a Bluetooth headset, to Forflight, it'll speak these alerts directly into your headset as well. I also want to highlight Forflight Web. So if you go to Forflight.com, which if you haven't yet, you totally should, you can do all of your planning on Forflight.com. It's built into your existing subscription. There's no software to install. It's your regular web browser. You go to Forflight.com, you can file flight plans, get weather briefings, and all that stuff you do on, on your home computer will synchronize automatically to your iPad. And once you get in your airplane, if you have avionics from one of our providers that we're partnered with, such as Garmin, Avidyne, Aspen, you can wirelessly transfer the flight plan that you've built on your iPad to your panel, and vice versa. I added Microsoft Flight Simulator here because I don't think a lot of folks realize uh, Forflight can connect to flight simulators at home. Um, so when you connect your flight simulator to Forflight, it'll think it's flying along with you in the simulator. And that's a really great way to uh, learn the application in a simulated environment. Tons of ways to learn more about ForeFlight. Check out that pilot's guide that's built into the application and the documents. That's the, that's the manual. It's got one chapter for every feature. Check out our videos page, foreflight.com slash videos. Every time we make a new feature, we make a little five-minute video about it, how to use it, uh, and you can browse on that on that page. Um, this course here, as well as all the other courses we're doing this week, are being recorded, and we'll upload them to that page on foreflight.com. You can also go to our blog, that's blog.forflight.com, and that's where we always have the latest news. And then finally, I want to highlight our pilot support team. They're available seven days a week. Send them an email with any questions. If you prefer phone support, that's fine. Just send us your phone number via email and a good time to call, and we'll give you a ring. Uh, I'm going to leave the schedule up here at the end. That concludes the fundamentals course. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I hope it was useful. I hope you learned something. Um, thank you. Uh, we have a few minutes for Q&A if anyone has any questions. Yeah, so the question is, um, if I'm in a cockpit and maybe my, my, I have an iPad and the person next to me has an iPad, how do I share my flight plan between those two devices? The answer is, the two devices will see each other as long as they're connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Um, in flight, that means if you have like a Sentry, an ADS-B Sentry device, or a Stratus device that both those devices are connected to, that's how they'll see each other. So you have to be on the same network to see each other. But once they are, they can send flight plans back and forth. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question is, um, sometimes 
when you are, let's put a route in here so we can kind of get a demo of this. So let's go from Austin, Texas to Aspen. So sometimes when you're um, dragging the, the, the route, maybe you want to modify your route, right? Uh, and you want to adjust this leg and move it somewhere else. Some, sometimes, oh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me put that up there. There we go. There's my iPad. Sorry. So we have a route from Austin to Aspen, okay? And the question is, sometimes um, I want to modify. I want to use that touch planning, right? I want to tap on the route line and move it somewhere else. Sometimes when I do that, it's just the map that moves. I can't get the, can't get the thing to move, the actual leg to move. What I suggest is zoom in on the route, take your finger, and long press. Hold it. Hold it on the line, okay? And that will allow you to move it. Other questions? Yes, sir. So the question is, let's say you're in flight, you're flying with ADS-B, right? So ADS-B, if you have an ADS-B in device, you're going to get things like weather, traffic, TFRs, et cetera, right? The question is, are there cases where that information could get out of date, where, whereas you might have more up-to-date information via an internet connection, right? And the answer is, it's, it, yes, it is, that is potentially possible. The ADS-B network is what we call a mesh network, so it's a series of towers all along the ground, and it has latency built into it. However, I'll say this, based on the usage of ADS-B amongst our customers that we've seen, ADS-B data, such as radar, et cetera, the most latency we normally see there is between 5 and 15 minutes. If you compare that to our internet radar source, our internet radar source ha normally has a latency of about five minutes. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question is, when I'm, when I'm up here in my layer selector, let's say I want to see traffic, OK? But you'll notice here. There is no traffic. Why don't I see traffic in this menu? Well, ForeFlight has to be connected to a traffic source in order to give you traffic. So if you don't see the option here, that means ForeFlight doesn't have a source of traffic. You either need to connect to a Wi-Fi network or an ADSB in device. And as soon as you do either of those things, you'll see an option here called traffic. Yeah, for situations like that, I recommend stopping by our booth in Hangar C. We can take a look at the diagnostic logs on your device and see exactly what's going on. Okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, if, if, every, if you see a thing in this list, you, you have access to it. You will never see things in this list that you don't have access to. Yeah, I'll, let me t I'll take a look at it after, okay? Any other questions? Yes, sir, in the back. Yeah, so I, if I heard you correctly, I think you asked about uh, a recording of the flight, a track log of the flight. Yeah, ForeFlight can record your flights for you. And once it's recorded, it'll show up in the More menu under the Track Log section. And you can see all the different devices uh, that you, let me see if I have one on here. I don't have an internet connection here right now. Let me see. Yeah, I can't actually show you one live. But this is where all of your track logs will show up once they're recorded. Um, there's a new feature, by the way, in the latest version of ForeFlight called Track Log Trim. And the idea is uh, when you can open up a track log and if there was a period of time where maybe you lost GPS reception or maybe the track log just doesn't look right for whatever reason, you can actually modify it directly in the application and crop out the portion that's wrong or the portion that you don't care about and save it. For more questions about track logs, please stop by our booth in Hangar C. We'll give you the full demo, okay? Anything else? Yep. Yeah, so the question is, um, when we talk about multiple stops or round-robin stops in ForeFlight, I'll be honest with you, the view in ForeFlight here, this is designed essentially for Airport A to Airport B. Um, support for simultaneous airports, like the same airport taking off and landing, multiple procedures, like if you were to do like an IFR currency flight, that sort of thing. 
That's not currently supported in Fort Flight. But that's really good feedback. I appreciate it. I know exactly what you're asking for, and I can assure you we're thinking about it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, great question. So the question is, um, uh, let's say you are adding certain waypoints, or maybe you're adding a specific runway for an airport that you want to land at. Um, that's fine if you're doing it in four flight. But let's say that you, t you want to pull the, the same route from your panel, right? You want to transfer something from your panel to four flight. Um, four flight works with a variety of different panels, but there's uh, what, what really goes on behind the scenes is each of the different manufacturers of avionics, such as Garmin, Avidyne, whatever, they have their own database formats, okay? So the actual database of information is organized in a different way, depending on each panel. So what Fort Flight has to do, if it wants to support all these panels, is it has to be a translator. It has to translate that database to the database that's built into Fort Flight. Sometimes there's translation errors. Sometimes ForeFlight can't translate something correctly. We're always working on improving that functionality. You mentioned that some runway sent you to South America. It's probably because that, that, that runway information in your database didn't have the metadata description on it to tell ForeFlight where it was, okay? So ForeFlight just defaulted to what it knew. Please send us an email team at foreflight.com with that specific route, okay? And the next time it happens, take a screenshot of it and send it to us. Because only with that information can we improve it, can we make it better, okay? Other questions? Yes, sir, in the blue. Yeah, so the question is, um, let's say I'm flying somewhere new, maybe I'm flying up into Canada, and if they, you know, with everything going on, COVID and everything, um, if they have certain requirements, uh, COVID-related requirements, can that, can you show that in ForeFlight? The answer is no, not yet. That's not something we have. Um, you know, ForeFlight does support the ability to import your own documentation. So, for example, if you found, if you're flying to Canada, right, and there was like a PDF uh, about COVID restrictions, you can import that document into ForeFlight and have it with you. But ForeFlight doesn't have those restrictions built into it. Okay? We are at time. Thank you so much for everyone for coming. Uh, we'll be in Hangar C all week. Thank you.